intro again. Hey guys, this is Andrea with Catch the Fire Worship Flags and you're in the Fire Catchers online book club. And today on July 27, we have a really, really special guest. Not only are we discussing this book, uh, Practice What You Praise, but we have Candace Johnson with us today. Welcome, Candace. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I it's I know you. So you're part of the Firecatchers group, but we connected uh, about a month and a half ago in, in Louisiana. We had the pleasure of doing a. Hi. So we'll let you. Um, can you, hi, Carianna, can you hear us? I got her. Okay, so we'll get her set up. So tell us, um, Candice, what it is that keeps you busy besides writing books. I know you have several books. Tell us about your books. Tell us about what you're doing um, besides that before we get into the, the book discussion. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, writing is actually my first love. So I'm writing all the time, but I also dance. I minister in dance and I teach dance <laughs> and I speak and um, I like to do a little acting and plays and things like that. And I've also recently started dabbling in hand lettering. So I hand letter journals and cards and Thank yous and spirals, supplies, you name it. Um, I'm doing it and it's just the funniest thing ever because I'm left-handed and I used to get in trouble in grade school for bad writing. So <laughs> the fact that I'm hand lettering now is just, God just has an incredible sense of humor. <laughs> um, and uh, Sunday, I have an awesome husband, uh, Cedric, and Sunday is our 12 year anniversary. And so I also spend time uh, being a wife. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, so I also got to meet Cedric, Dennis's, um amazing husband. He is, um, he's a teddy bear. He's a, t but a lion as well, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's so protective of Candace. Like I love the way that he just helps her and manages her and just makes sure that she is safe. He treats her like a princess. Oh yeah, really, <laughs> really, <laughs> big time. Definitely, mm. <laughs> he does. He does. So, um, God has just really blessed us. He really has. A, tr a train is coming. I'm just going to put myself on mute for a second. Rosie, pick up. How, how long ago did you write the book, Candace? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you asked me that. Um, and the reason why is, you know, I laugh every time I think about this. Uh, I'll try to make it really, really short. But I actually published the book in 2015. However, the first draft was written 10 years prior to that. Wow. It's been for 10 years because pretty much because fear had a chokehold on me. And it was just one of those things um, ever since I was a young girl, and I'm in my mid-40s now, um, I was told I could write. People loved my writing. My writing was special. My writing was this. My writing was that. I even worked uh, for the Associated Press. And oh. I still didn't have confidence in it. You know how you can tell God yes, but you're not giving him a confident yes. And you don't really believe always in that yes that you're giving. I didn't totally believe in that yes because I still worried about it. What were people going to think? What would they say? And things like that. So it sat for 10 years. And I'm the kind of person that sometimes God has to pull me by my shirt collar and say, hey, get it together. And that's exactly what happened with this book. I was in a job, a corporate job that I was very, very, very unhappy in. And one day I just said, God, I, I just prayed. And uh, we had these little rooms in the bottom of the building. It was like a 40 story building. And I went to the very bottom and I just cried and I prayed and said, God, you know, I'm so unhappy here. And I said, I need my suddenly. 
Well, my son, they came the next day, so be careful what you pray for. <laughs> when they came in, I'm elim we're eliminating your position. So I wasn't fired, I wasn't laid off, but my position was eliminated. And they said, you know, so we're, we're gonna outsource everything that you do. And that was when I really literally went home, took a couple of days off, and I pulled out this book, got it together, and got it published. So had it had I still been there, it would have been my excuse for not finishing the book. It would have been my excuse. Wow. So um, this book, so I, I want to talk about this book, and then you can tell us about some of your other books and what you um, are working on. But so I just before as we were getting a conversation going just before we started recording this for you. Uh, I was saying to Candace that as I was reading this book, I can completely hear her voice in it. Um, and I have to say, so, you know, when you read something or you get something, but a creative uh, piece by, by your friend and you really want to like it and you're like, Oh, it's really bad though. And I don't really, <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, I'm so glad that this is an awesome book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that I didn't have to like, oh, no. So it's really, uh, what I really, so we'll get into the characters and I have like lots of questions for you. But what I want to say is that it is so, like your, the, the metaphors and the similes that you use to describe, like, like really good writing is they say that you, you show, don't tell. And the way that you use creative metaphors now, I, and I, that's how I could definitely hear your voice. Cause when I would hear you speak at the conference, um, I'm just, I'm, I was waiting for fry your chicken. You, there's nothing, there's no, there's no fry your chicken in here, but, um, but, uh, just the metaphors that you bring and have such a really, um, fun way of getting like colloquialism. Like I, I think they're, they're probably more like Candace colloquialisms. Or it's culture. I don't know, but it was it was so engaging. Like I was, I I should have actually underlined or out, um, uh, made some notes so that I could just share it with in the group. But I just it is it's really well written. Um, oh, thank you. It's it's just a fun read. So can you? And there's quite a number of characters in the book. The so one of my first questions is, who do you? Okay, maybe just for the, the readers um, out there who might be watching this and maybe haven't actually picked up the book, can you kind of give us a, a synopsis of the book in your own words and then a little bit of a rundown of, of who the characters are? Oh, definitely. And thank you so much for saying that. Um, and, and it's hilarious because the publisher, I actually first approached her about co-authoring that book with me. And I sent her the original draft and she said, your voice is too strong and different. <laughs> she said, we're not writing this together. You write the book and I'll publish you. And, um, you know, I just kind of, these crazy thoughts pop into my head. <laughs> I have to put them on paper. But um, it's called Practice What You Praise. And over and over, the question kept coming to me. You know, I said, if I write something, I want it to be different. I've never in my life wanted to be the same as anyone else or wanted to do the same things that anyone else was doing. I've never quite fit in. And so I wanted to write about a subject that maybe everyone wasn't writing about. And that question kept coming up, who gives you the right to praise? Who gives you the right to praise? Who gives you the right to praise? And ultimately, that's what the book is about. It's about a young uh, teenage girl who's my favorite character in any of my books, probably because she made me a book mama. <laughs> you know, um, I wouldn't have birthed the books without her, but her name is Jojo. And uh, Jojo is a teen mom. And basically, she sat down from the praise dance ministry because of the fact that she is a teenage mother. However, her little girl's father is on the worship team. He's a worship leader, and he's still allowed to sing. And so the church is divided. Does she, does she have a right to take the platform and praise and worship or should she be punished forever? And so you have a pastor, uh, we 
have so many bad pastors in books that I wanted to make a good human pastor, you know, and he's yeah. troubled by the whole thing. Um, you know, do I listen to the church or do, am I sensitive to what God is saying about this young lady? And then you have the two moms who are going at it. Um, Jojo's mother and the child's father, his name is Blaze. Um, his mother pretty much thinks she's trapping my son because he's going to be this big star. He's the next big thing. And she just wants to trap him. And uh, so the parents used to be best friends. Now they are no longer friends because of the situation. All this is going on and the child can walk and talk by now. <laughs> so it's been that long ago and she wants to return to the dance ministry, but judgment gets in the way pretty much. And I've seen it in church a lot. And even with our dance ministry with the dance ministry uh, that God gave me order sets productions. Um, our dance company is all different ages, but I've worked with a lot of young people and I see the things that they go through. I see how ministry can hurt someone because sometimes we take our eyes off of God and what the focus is um, that he's the focus of the dance. And in the book, that's what I'm trying to convey, too, is that he's the focus of our worship. He's the focus of our praise. And you have so many flawed characters. Well, what sin is greater? Because everyone has these different sins. And her mom, is uh, Judge's mom, is a little hothead, <laughs> Judge Frankie. And she's going off at every turn um, because she doesn't like that her daughter is being mistreated in the church and then you have a, a, an associate pastor who is preaching on her from the pulpit um how wrong is that you know have you ever been preached on from the pulpit how ugly is that you know how wrong is that <laughs> oh rosie's tickling me but um so there's you know it's just one of those things that we take our eyes off of our savior and we fall into sin without even knowing that we're sinning sometimes and that's the basis for the entire book and her redemption and mind you she has repented she has repented and she does have a strong relationship with god but this thing with the church is hurting her and instead of drawing her to the church is pushing her away, further away. Right. And I've seen that happen so often in, in real life. And I believe that's why I was drawn to write that kind of story. Um, my stories are more uh, faith-based to where um, I like people to have hope and be encouraged and not just uh beat down by the bible but uplifted with the scriptures for sure so <laughs> oh so i, I want to get into a little bit more of the characters um and kind of delve into um some of those characters and, and but so i just was finding one of the one such awesome little metaphor which tells you exactly gives this picture so it's in chapter seven she so she uh we're talking about jojo i think uh she caught a glimpse of herself in the dingy mirror begging for a hit of windex to purge its dust addiction which is such a great way to say the, the window was super dirty <laughs> it's, it's such and she it's all of these great metaphors um where you you like i mean that's just really simple and the message is so deep that those um the little surprises makes it uh, not quite so heavy because you're dealing with a really, really heavy subject. And we had talked, um, I did a little a teaching, not a, a format like this, it's about rejection. I mean, we've all been, you know, in the arts, we've been rejected, but what this, this teen mom and, and the competition, like with her cousin, just couldn't get happy for her. And then yeah. they wanted to crucify, they wanted to continue to crucify. And I was, okay, so here's my question. Um, would, would, is it, does that really happen? Like when there's, um, that they, like there would that scene when they're the mother, the two mothers, Frankie, Jojo's mother and Millie, the, 
Blaze is, Blaze is the father, the father's mother are in the meeting with Trig and he doesn't know what to do. He's a pastor, so he's pastoral. I actually really got that role. He doesn't, he wants to make everybody happy and every, um, but like, would they actually be going at it? So like, would that be normal? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yes. That's um, nasty. Like yes. really nasty. It is like, this is actually now the book itself. I'll put this disclaimer out there. It really is fiction, <laughs> but some of these situations, or some of these things I have seen that happen. I've seen families. I was teaching at a church one time years ago and the, I hear all this yelling and screaming outside the door and um, not so heavenly language. And <laughs> <laughs> I walked out and the family is fighting. I'm going, are y'all serious? I've got kids in here. We're in a church. It, it was wow. incredible. It was, I couldn't believe it. I cannot believe it. So I've, I've definitely seen it happen. Yes. So this, this is true. And one of the, so that one of the, the themes was, the, the, the fact that she was a pregnant, uh, a pregnant teen and she was off the team. And yet the, yet the father of the baby was moving on with his gospel singing career. Now, were you making a statement about also the sexism that is in the church? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's there. It's alive um in the most horrible way and i just i i can't stand it <laughs> i can't stand mm -hmm. it I, i've seen it happen and and it's like you you mentioned earlier which was a really good word uh that they're crucifying her but he is celebrated regardless yeah. of his role in it He's celebrated, and I've seen that happen, and a lot of times that happens with men in the church. We're going to celebrate them even when they fall, but if you let a woman fall, it's hard for her to come back. It's mm -hmm. hard for her to come back without being judged uh, more harshly than, than the male counterpart. So that was a very strong statement I was making there. Yeah. And how is the book? So, I mean, there's so many strong statements in it. How has the book been received by those in leadership over you? I actually was supported. I was actually supported <laughs> a lot more than I thought. Um, when I say I was afraid, I was very, very fearful. Um, it was like one of those things of, I'm not trying to come against the church itself. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I didn't want it to come off as um, I have a problem with the church or anything like that, because I really and truly don't. But there are just some injustices inside the church that we're afraid to talk about. And um, a lot of authors are silent on it. Honestly, for a lot of Christian authors, the go-to sequence is a um, a cheating pastor. That's usually, you know, the go-to plot. The pastor's cheating, and and so that's why I wanted Pastor Trigg to be an upright pastor, um, mm -hmm. not the you know stereotypical. All the pastors and the deacons in the church are cheaters and. The women are blind and they never know what's going on or they're just ignoring it type of thing. Well, and then you also have like the, the January, um, what's her January? Oh, <laughs> January pepper, <laughs> January pepper. She's, she's the Mary Magdalene kind of gal yes. in the whole book, the, the hoochie mama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's been, uh, she who who knows what it's what it's like to be like I, that was a great character even 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 the main character jojo at the, at the in their very first meeting uh so they so jojo meets january or they're into they, they knew each other for all from church but they're introduced in the book right outside this meeting where the two moms are going at it uh with the pastor and 
and she had, I, you know, all I could think about when you're talking, when, uh, she, when it, I think it says Jojo wanted, uh, wanted to look at her eyes, but something else was staring at her. Oh, yes. <laughs> something like all you, I mean, it was just the idea of this cleavage. And I kept thinking of when you were teaching, if it, if it <laughs> feels jiggles, shakes or moves, tape it down. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, she needs to tape that down. <laughs> So, but, but all of that, like, she was such a, she was such a, um, like, even Jojo in her state, um, being the subject of, of the sinful woman, um, had made also passed a judgment on January as well, until she realized, hey, this woman knows, she knows my pain. She's been there. She's been misjudged. She yes. to look like she like that's she's a girly girl and she right but she so I thought that was a great character that you brought in for um to be the guide really in the guide of reason even for Trig. Yes, um she was one of my favorites, especially the name. <laughs> Especially the name. I used to work in customer service and we had vendors. And so that's actually a real name. <laughs> and just when she would call, I thought, that is a fun name. I just love that name. <laughs> and she uh, was a country girl with a thick country accent. But um, I love that character because I've been in that position before where I would see someone and I had a thought about that person. And it was totally off. It was totally off, and that's just not who they were. And they turned out to be the most awesome, you know, person. And sometimes the best Christian examples are the ones we don't look to. They don't look like what we think they should look like. Um, It's not the packaging, so to speak, that we think it should come in. And that's where January came from, because we'll look at the way that they're dressed and think that they're sending a message that they never sent. We just heard what we wanted to hear. And if we just talk to them and engage them, we'll find out that we can learn from them too. Even with me, um, I am a lot of times judged. I actually had another dance leader one time snap her fingers like that in my face um, because she thought I was a kid. No one really looks at me and they, they know how old I am. So they kind of, I can tell how you're talking to the youth at your church by how you're talking to me because you think I'm one of them. And it doesn't mean Just that they before, don't Candace is really little. <laughs> <laughs> she's little in stature, not in personality, but she's little. So, and she looks super young. Like we're the same age, but we do not look the same age. <laughs> so... So that's where, uh, yeah, the audacity. But even even if you were a child, you don't talk to a child like that. Exactly. Exactly. You don't talk to a child like that. And that's exactly what I would let people know once they would find out that I wasn't a child. (laughs) You know, um, even at one of my former churches, it's hilarious. Um, I took... uh, our daughter, Cedric, has a, a, a daughter. She was a teenager at the time. And she didn't know where the restroom was. So I went to show her the, where the bathroom was. And we both got in trouble. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm grown. <laughs> well, the ushers are just fussing at me. You kids need to get back in the sanctuary. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Who are you talking to? But, you know, we just make assumptions um, where we shouldn't. And that's really where what that character, January, is for, to keep us from assuming things about each other. And so did you, when you were writing that book, did you, like you said, you, that you, you've experienced that. Have you, is there a part, a part of you in all of those characters? Because I found, I say, like I found, like as reading, I was, there was probably... At some point, I've been all of those characters, except for the past, not pastoral. (laughs) I would say, now the pastor, honestly, that is 
uh, definitely not like me at all, but he is very much like Cedric. Cedric is yeah. very diplomatic. Yeah. He is very the peacemaker in every situation, quite literally. Like when he gets upset and he says something, I know when he's really, really, really upset because he's a peacemaker. And so if he says something uh, to <coughs> someone or, you know, I know, okay, he is really mad right now, um, really angry uh, because he takes uh, the angry sin not to heart. He, he literally does. So he's very calm and even tempered, whereas I am more on the spectrum. Um, I'm better now. Once I, once I found worship, I, I used to laugh. I said, God made me so little because I had a little temper. <laughs> I said, I had zero tolerance for anything. I was more like Peter, you know, just chop the ear off <laughs> and worry about everything else later. But um, I <laughs> to deal with my anger <laughs> um, through worship. Honestly, you know, um, and I said at the conference that worship saved my life, literally. And that's one of the things I feel like worship saved me from myself. Um, because I had such a horrible temper in the past. So I had to laugh when writing JoJo's mother, uh, Judge Frankie, because that in my former life would have been me. <laughs> Climbing across tables and <laughs> all that kind of fun stuff that I can't do now. <laughs> but um, I would say there's a little of me in most of those most of those characters there's a little of me there so and i have just like a silly sense of humor as well and so even with the deep subjects that's why i had to put the humor in yeah. there because um, it was pretty deep and i think that anybody reading the book is going to identify themselves at some point in all of those characters um yeah. where we've where we need the mercy where we haven't given the mercy um oh. Right, like mm -hmm. I remember, I um, a friend, a friend, rightly accused me of saying that I wasn't. She, she says, you know, that God's probably going to teach you mercy by by the fact that you're going to require it. <laughs> like, how about we learn a different way? <laughs> That's what she <laughs> But it's true, right? We so those that have been given mercy are way more merciful. So the Lord just gives you compassion in those. So, I mean, so on, it's, I mean, the book has like on both ends of the spectrum um, and they seem like it extreme um, personalities, but I mean, the, at the end of it, we're all there, we're all in those in different areas. I, it would be easy to see each other or see yourself. Um, you, yeah. Don't read it for so and think, oh, this is, you know, so-and-so <laughs> don't be accusing. Just look at yourself when you're reading the book, but. Right. Right. Yeah. And I made them so, I had to make it extreme because that's how social media is. Yeah. If you notice, like when people, um, anyone who looks at my social media page will see, you never notice anything political on my page or, or anything that I would deem polarizing because it's so extreme one or the other and I'm not the kind that will break up a friendship due to politics you know what I mean someone I really care about we can have differences but in this age of social media it's like we can't disagree anymore we can't agree to disagree mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to show that that's how it is, you know, it's like one extreme or the other, there's no middle ground or coming together. And as Christians and in the church, we're losing a lot of compassion because of that and empathy. And I know how much grace I have been covered in. And I know how much mercy has been afforded to me by God. And sometimes we forget that. Yeah. So, uh oh, it looks like I'm low battery. Grab my charger. <laughs> I'm yeah, still here. So. It'd be terrible if we lost you in the middle. Of <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I would just pass out. But <laughs> grabbing my charger here. But no worries. So I want to. Um, 
if you do you have any questions about the authoring process for her um and just like any other questions from anyone else i don't want to be the only one chatting but um my question candace would be from the author's perspective to those such as are are in your presence at the moment specifically the, the common denominator we have is worship slash flags what would be your your most predominant recommendation as a takeaway from what what you've written okay hold on just a second i'm sorry I'm trying to get no that's this. okay i should have waited until you were i think that's better okay <laughs> Can you repeat the last part? What would be my takeaway? What What would you recommend to us be our most important takeaway from your work? Oh, wow. Hope. Writing stories of hope. Um, what I say is that I write stories about hope um, overcoming adversity. We like to write about troubles, so we don't like to write the solutions, if that makes sense. Um, and so for me, I really want authors, anyone else who is currently an author or has aspirations of becoming an author, one of the things that we have to do is go for it. Put your heart into it. Um, don't worry about what people are going to say people are going to have their opinions people are going to either like it or they're not going to like it um one of i i had the opportunity i was blessed uh, with the opportunity to take a master class from my writing hero um for my birthday at the beginning of the year and one thing that she told us and she teaches everyone her name is victoria christopher murray is to bleed on the page and so I'm offering that to everybody, lead on the page, because people, they like to see themselves or situations that they can deal with or relate to. Um, don't let fear grip you, because that 10 years, it should not have taken me that long. It shouldn't have taken me that long. But I'm so glad that uh, with God's timing, you know, that his timing is perfect. I love that takeaway, you know, as a, as a fellow writer, the, my creative advisor shared the same concept about bleeding on the page. I love the, uh, the ability to be able to apply that concept to worship, meaning bleed in your worship, <laughs> give it your all. And um, because I don't know, I'm, I'm the kind of person, <laughs> Andrew's over there, oh my God, with her tears. I don't know how to do one or the other anymore. I'm, I just, I, I, my, my blood, sweat and tears are literally tears for the most part. But, um, but it's true. I don't, I don't know, especially in, in the aspect of, of, of worship application, and maybe it's a judgmental statement to make, not really care at this point, but I don't know how people can hold back when they're called to be a worshiper. I just... So I don't get that part. I don't. I, it's not something I can do. I'm a bleeder. <laughs> I am too. I am too. Um, and, and it's so funny that you say that, Rosie, because someone said that to me today. Um, uh, I had joined the writing group, and on Fridays, uh, you can put like the first five sentences of one of your chapters um, and you can't tell what the book is or you know like the um, title or anything like that you just have to put the first five sentences no explanation or anything i and need more you... info on that just sidebar <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> yeah just if and... i say that you know it, it was amazing and i told uh one of the authors that hers her submission was so powerful and so emotional and i said you know i come from an emotional place when i write and her response came back that's because you're a worshiper 
and you pour out. And for her to notice that because she doesn't know me and it shows how people watch you and you don't even, you don't even know it. And so we have to watch what we represent at all times. Um, and wow. even in the books, even in the writing, um, I feel like I've grown since the first book. And sometimes I will push the envelope and I get a little nervous, but in the end, I want God to get the glory from all of my writing because it's another form of worship for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Julie or, or Cariana, um, are you, are you writers? No. Cariana is. Okay. I just unmuted. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, I'm still figuring this out. Um, I, 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 you know, as much as I should, I always consider myself writer Lee. <laughs> 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 Author yet? I'm not. <laughs> you know. That's so. good. I like that writer. <laughs> <laughs> me too. That's the best. Oh, I doodle. I'm not a writer. I'm just writer-ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did mention um, with what you were saying, Candace and Rosie, about um, the the bleeding and leaving it all out there when you worship. Um, I had read a book. I uh, can't remember which one right now. It, it was, uh, I think, the one of the ladies out of Bethel that does worship stuff. And she had talked about being careful what you release corporately. She's like, make sure you deal with all your stuff and then get up and worship. And so there's, there's like truth to that. You know, I can see the wisdom and like making sure that you're not, you know, um, being responsible for the, where you're at, the positioning, but also um, I kind of questioned it a little because like the flags that I have right now are the, um, the beautiful offering ones and I'm using those for corporate worship and so I really feel like where I'm at with because me being on stage is a new new thing and so it is I'm I'm displaying my personal intimacy with God and it's it's almost like I feel like released to do that like I'm supposed to in this season but it is sometimes I feel like some of my hair <laughs> you know, gets out there a little bit I, I bleed <laughs> I'm like sorry guys I'm like having a moment here <laughs> on stage apparently you know and so um it's been interesting to process through that <laughs> it's an intro that uh, carrie and that's actually a really great topic for a discussion that we should explore sometime because that's a great i, I talk a lot about that and um candace you've i mean we've had these conversations kind of just about being private worshipers before republic worshipers and and that whole, um, a as leaders, now you've put your stuff out there. Like now we're talking, I mean, you're, you're so much, Candace, you're so much more than just even the, the author. Um, I mean, I knew you in the, I, I met you in the role of, of the dance instructor and the dance team leader and the production team leader. And um, just, just hearing your heart, uh, I mean, it really did come through in the characters for sure, and it. But it is amazing how, if, how many people I think are, are just really performance about it. And I mean, there's a there's a rawness, like Carriana, what you were saying. There is a rawness about bringing. Uh, like, and that's your main character, Jojo. She did. She danced it out. Like. Um, like even her, even like a worshiper who's, 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 if the only time you're worshiping and, and I actually used a quote by you today on my Instagram, um, uh, let us not be so complacent in our worship that we only lift our hands when it's time to dance. Um, yes. I forget what the whole quote was, but I mean, it's, I, I pulled it from your from your page and I used it. Um, and that's so, so Carriana, what you're saying, even if you are the only, if that's 
you're being vulnerable in front and that's okay because you're, you're vulnerable before the Lord um, all of the time. It, you're not, it's not just right. There's, there's one, there's one ask, like we don't, we actually want to see and hear a pastor or a speaker. Um, we don't want them to, to, we want to see the, the process. And if, and if we don't see the process, we will forever feel less than it, if our leaders are not vulnerable, if, if the voices that are speaking, the books that are coming out, the authors that are saying, if we don't see that vulnerability in the process, then we will never measure up. We will think, oh, I'm over here and they're over here. And I just, I'll, I, and like, there's this, yeah, I used to be judgmental and now I'm totally got the mercy. Like you don't hear that, that, or you don't see the worship part of it. You don't see the praise come out. You don't see that process. And so, um, I mean, your characters really went through, I mean, and then, and then there's some that just never get it. Like Bellamy, her cousin never got it. She stayed better to the end. Um, and I, I think that, I mean, the blessing is, and it's, and we, we don't, do it for other people, but other people are blessed by it. So, so you're still on display. You're still, um, little, it's a little thing, um, that if you like, and it, when you are true before the Lord, you will, it doesn't, it is never about stealing his glory. You won't, even if you're on display, you won't steal the glory because you're so vulnerable, right? Oh, most definitely. I think um, I'm so I used to think I was too transparent and vulnerable in front of people um, when I worship. But then I realized that that's where God wants me to be. And that's why I write the way that I do, because we've all been in these valleys and dry places. And like you said, I love that you said um, that a leader will forever be separated if they can't show that vulnerable, you know, that they're vulnerable too. And there are so many mistakes, like I, on my Facebook page, I write uh, tips, you know, get the point. And what I try to explain to people is a lot of times, these might be things that I've done. You know, um, I might have done that before, um, but either I've done it or I've seen it enough to where I'll put that out there, you know, so it's not a wagging the finger. It's a, we can do better and not you can do better. We can do better because we can always do better. I even, um, I fight, I'm fighting this little battle and it's a little thing, but to me, it's a little big thing where in recent years, people, like when we go out to minister, they'll put my name and then they'll put the dance company name. And so I'm trying to get people not to do that because I said, we're one, you know, it, it's not me and them. <laughs> it's us. You're bringing order steps, not Candace and order steps. Um, I understand my leadership role, but I also understand that we worship together and I don't want that kind of separation. And um, unfortunately, Bellamy, the Bellamy character in the book, that is a true representation of some people in praise dance. She is a true representation because sometimes now we're getting classically trained, um, but no one really trains us on etiquette. You can get all the classical training that you want, but if you have a bad attitude, God can't receive that, you know? And it's one of those things where Jojo has the raw talent. Well, that was, uh, me and I'm not saying oh, I'm all this talented and all that but what I'm saying is God pulled me out of a dry place never, never having dance classes and now he's using me to teach other people and again we got to watch who we judge you know people would look at me even my parents were they didn't judge me but they're like you can dance <laughs> I said I don't know, but I hear God telling me to go do it. So I'm gonna... was that a question mark or exclamation point when they said it? <laughs> uh, it was a question mark and their eyebrows raised like, we've never seen you. Do 
Well, Jesus has. <laughs> I said, well, the Holy Spirit is leading me to go dance. God's telling me to dance. I'm going to go dance. And they said, well, how do you know what to do? And I said, God's going to tell me what to do. So it's just one of those things where I may not have the same background and training as someone else, even in the writing. Um, even with writing the book, honestly, these uh, even the even the person that published the book for me, uh, the first and the second book, she's a best-selling author too, an award-winning author, and even that for me was intimidating. But I felt God just really pulling me to reach out to her, and I was very frightened to do so because uh, a lot of times in my life I've been the one who will let an opportunity pass because I was too afraid to open my mouth or uh, sometimes people hear me say hit send I type something up and then I'd hit the beat instead of hit send because I was too scared and I thought well you know I'm nobody and why would she want to work with me and it turned out she didn't want to write with me but she wanted to publish me so you just never, you know, sometimes we've just got to fight that fear and just leap. I have one of the books that I hand her, uh, that I hand her, I say leap and the net will appear. So sometimes, especially with publishing, we have to take that leap and just trust that God's going to do it because the literary industry has so much rejection in it. And um, I even say our dance company is comprised of ladies who've been broken, rejected, and told no. Um, I even, uh, I, I can share it with y'all. I've never really even shared this publicly, but even one of our dancers, people would never know it, but she's part of the Special Olympics. But other people don't want her to dance with them. But she can come dance with us because we're worshiping and not as opposed to performing and it's just you know i love the whole i just love this journey and i love this adventure this is it's magnificent and god has taken me further in three years than many writers get in a lifetime so it's it's a blessing all the way around it truly truly is that is so great. When you were talking about your dance troupe, it reminds me of David and his, and the men, the mighty men that, that, that surrounded him, all the, all the down and out, the outcasts that he, that he brought in and made them into an in, incredibly strong warriors, right? That, that had amazing battle. So, I mean, I, I think, I mean, that, I, I think that that's a very accurate portrayal. And we want to um, kind of just, we want to honor the time. I want to make sure that uh, we get your last remarks, but I just want to say, okay, so again, we've got, this is the book, um, Practice What You Praise by Candace Johnson. This was her very first book and she has, so we've been talking about this. We really want you to pick this up book, this book up. The best way to do it is on Amazon, correct? How, yes. can you, how can we get this book? Go go on Amazon or you can inbox me and I can send you an autograph copy. <laughs> Rosie wants an autograph <laughs> copy. And tell us what you are, um, tell us about your other books and what you're working on now. Okay, so um, let me make it short. The next book uh, following up is When All Praise Breaks Loose. Um, and that's picking it up with Pastor Trigg's story. He was such an intriguing character to me. So I had to pick up his story um, and the dance teacher. Uh, and I didn't, she didn't really have as prominent a role in the first book, The Epiphany, um, the dance teacher and the little romance that they have going. So that's the, <laughs> that's the follow up um, to practice what you praise. Um, and then I wrote um, Brown Girls Books. I was part of their anthology called Single Mama Dating Drama. Um, my story, but there's secular stories in there, but my story is the Christian story. <laughs> and it's a faith-based story. And it's called Mom's Little Prophetess. Um, and it's about a little girl um, who every man that her mother meets and tries to date, the little girl says, 
God said that's not, he's not the one. So <laughs> she's a little confident, literally. And then um, I've also written a nonfiction book. Uh, I published it in uh, January, and you can get it on Barnes and Noble um, or iTunes or Smashwords. And it's called Cry But Keep Going. And that's uh, devotions, prayers, and testimonies. Um, it kind of has a little bit of background on me and just some encouragement and inspiration. And I always say, it's all right to cry, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. Don't quit. Um, right now, and I hope everyone will pray with me, but um, I have sitting at the publisher waiting to see if they're going to publish it or not. It's called Send a Revival. Um, and it's, it's pretty deep. It's very deep. And I am in the middle of finishing right now. Only tithes, like tithing, will tell. And that's a deep one because no one likes to talk about say that. Tithing. Say that again. <laughs> tithing. Only tithes will tell. Only tithes will tell. Okay. Yes. And it is a fiction story, but tithing is at the center of it. And then uh, the Revival is the one that, you know, I completed and just waiting patiently for the publisher to give. A Sorry, it's called, it's called Send In Revival? Send a Revival. Send a Revival. Sorry, it's just cutting out. Is it cutting out for the rest of you guys? Yeah, you're just cutting, you're breaking up a little bit. So I want to make sure that these, um, that the titles, that people can find the titles and pray about th about the ones that are coming and so we have um the practice what you praise in the sequel to that one or the one is called again when all praise breaks loose when all praise breaks loose we'll have these links um on uh on the we'll put it on the fire catch the fire worship flags facebook page and also in the fire catchers group um where we where it's easier for us to all interact i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, pray but do you guys have any more do you have a question one last question before i pray no? i just wanted to say thank you so much i enjoyed myself <laughs> and it was really great for me to be able to see you again and uh chat a little bit uh and so I mean, it's, it's really great to have, you know, big league friends, man. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so, um, and, and I consider you a friend. Same here. I feel the same way about you. And I'm looking forward to meeting Rosie in person. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you too about catch the fire at the state fair of texas so I'll, I'll talk to you about that too. okay so i'm gonna pray <laughs> and then we're gonna stop the recording um and then uh don't 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 go away just yet but i'm just gonna we'll stop the recording at the point so father i thank you for this time thank you for the creativity that you unleash upon this woman that she is a dancer and a writer and she is doing lettering and how you redeem your just sense of humor and how you redeem everything um, about us and just the beautiful story that she's written that uh, really it's a, a work of fiction but Lord it just is so real in terms of the characters and that we would recognize uh, ourselves so thank you for the gift that you've put in her make it bloom and flower and explode I pray for the sender revival not only will you do that in person Lord that we'll see that but we pray that this book that's at the publisher would be written we would be um, given to the public so that we would be able to um, enter into that and, and engage with what she's, the insight and the revelation and the passion and the, just the amazing creativity that you've put on Candace. And for Cedric too, just the couple that they are, this, that have such a heart after you and that you would make their ministry um, just explode that there the influence would be wider and be bigger and deeper and and stronger and more powerful than they ever imagined and that there would be that they would never ever um, 
lose their sense of wonder and their sense of just watching what you're doing, following and running after you. So I thank you for the women that have joined us and the ones that are going to be that, that will watch later that we were, that we were just blessed for the, for the conversation and for hearing from her about her story and how she's put it together to bless us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.